Greetings, this is August 14th and we are looking at infrared and smoke data from today. This is a satellite image from NASA's firm system. We're looking at the Tremont Creek fire and if we zoom out we can see the Lytton fire below. And if we zoom out further we can see the fire up at Sparks Lake uh, burning just to the west of Bonaparte as well as Tremont Creek in the middle and the Lytton fire down below. We're going to jump in at the Tremont Creek fire. It's made an expansion southwards towards Logan Lake. The red squares are the VIIRS, the yellow squares are the Aqua system. And we get both of these updates a little later in the day. So it's the most recent data for us. So this is the infrared from yesterday and now the infrared for today. That southwestern fire cluster did grow larger and it appears to have been pushed southwards. Uh, we're also seeing some of these diagonal uh, ordered or pattern control signatures of infrared which may be a control strategy. If we zoom into Logan Lake last night we saw it had made some approach southwards towards Logan Lake. Now with more westerly breezes it has moved eastward and there is southeastward movement in those yellow aqua squares close to Tungwa Lake Road. We're zooming out and looking at the northeast flank of this fire. This is the infrared from today and we can see those hot spots that have moved right up against Tunkwa Lake Road and that valley at the center of the screen. And that contact point appears close to the trailhead at Savannah Caves. We're zooming out now. We can see the infrared overlaid on top of the smoke. And if we take off the infrared, we can see what looks to be one of these pyroclastic cumulo clouds in the center of the screen and the smoke plumes are trailing to the east. Uh, north of this along Highway 1, Savannah Lake, we can see another trail of smoke that is coming from the pavilion fire. It also appears like there is still smoke being generated at the northern flank of this fire closer to Cache Creek and Wallachine. So when we turn on the infrared, yes, we do see some clusters in the north and central areas of this fire zone. We're moving a few kilometers southwest now. This is the Lytton fire zone. We are looking at infrared from yesterday and now today. I am seeing expansion in those yellow aqua indications. Uh, they seem to have grown just outside those red perimeters from yesterday. Uh, turning on the smoke, we see that smoke trail heading eastward from the main fire zone. However, on the left hand side to the south of Lytton, that's near Kanaka Bar, and that pocket has grown and I believe there may have been an alert issued regarding this area of the fire zone. So you do want to check with the ground report. Go to BC Wildfire in the links in the description below and find out the up-to-date information on each of these fire situations. We're jumping up to the Bonaparte and the Sparks Lake fire complex. We can see Bonaparte on the right hand side of the screen. Young Lake is on the upper left hand portion of the screen. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. All of these infrared clusters appear to have moved to the northeast and east. Uh, I can see on the far right of the screen those infrared may have reached the park boundary on the west side. We are zooming out and turning on the satellite imagery. We can see those smoke plumes coming off the eastern flank of the Sparks Lake fire, heading in an easterly direction over Bonaparte Park. There can be debris and incendiary material in these smoke plumes uh, being jettisoned uh, further in front of the fire, and those can cause spot fire. So we'll have to be watchful if we're anywhere east of these fire zones today. We are now looking at the Flat Lake fire zone. We've moved a little bit northwest. Uh, we can see Highway 97 on the right-hand portion of the screen. Gustafson Lake is uh, to the left of center, and Moose Valley is at the top of the screen. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. So it has pushed northwards towards Moose Valley. I'm not seeing a lot of expansion eastwards, but definite uh, increase in the amount of infrared all along that northern flank. 
We're now at overlooking the Pavilion Fire. This is in the mountains to the north, and this is the infrared from yesterday. And now today, we can see expansion both northwards and southwards. Uh, there's also hot spots showing up to the southeast of this fire zone, stretching back down south towards the Fraser River. We've just headed northwards up the Fraser. Uh, we're looking at an area just south of Gang Ranch. This is infrared from yesterday and now today. I'm seeing a push of that infrared westward. Most of the activity appears to be moving along to the north of Coster Creek and Coster Lake, and the valley to the north is Churn Creek. We've zoomed out. We're looking at the region. That's the Sparks Lake fire over on the bottom right. Flat Lake is to the top of the screen. The Pavilion fire is on the lower left, and the fire near Churn Creek is to the upper left. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. It appears like all these fire zones fanned out from the Fraser River. Those on the west of the Fraser move to the northwest, and those on the right-hand side of the Fraser, they move to the northeast. This is the satellite imagery for the region. You can see it was filled with smoke over on the right-hand side of the screen. Those winds pushed everything to the east. However, there was cloud cover over top of the Churn Creek fire and the Flat Lake fire, so we may not be seeing all the infrared there. It can be obscured by cloud and haze. We've moved just to the northeast. Canham Lake is on the upper left-hand side of the screen. To wheel is on the lower right hand side. This is the data from today and we can see activity to the north of Canham Lake and uh, three or four hotspots to the southeast of Canham Lake. We're moving now to the White Rock Lake Fire, Okanagan Lake, and the North Okanagan is to the lower right hand side of the screen. Monty Lake is at the top of the screen. This is the infrared for yesterday and now today. I am seeing a slight push eastward and northeastward on these fire flanks. Let's move now to the southeast flank of this fire zone. Kalini Beach is at the lower part of the screen. West side is just right of center. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. The infrared did appear to expand outward on all fire flanks, uh, both north, east, and to the south. When we turn on the aqua, uh, we can see the extent of the infrared today. The fire zone has gradually moved southwest of Kalini Beach, and it's also moved a little bit northward into those forested blocks south of Sweets Bridge. And generally, it, there's a lot of activity all around this fire perimeter. Yesterday, it was looking like we could get some isolated clusters there. But today, it looks like more of them are actually joining up. Keep in mind, those squares do not mean that they're being consumed by fire. It just means that heat was detected somewhere within that square. We're looking at the area around Monty Lake and Westwold now and north to the Paxton Valley at the top of the screen. This is yesterday's infrared and now today's. There was a push eastward up on the north hillside, Paxton Valley. Generally, all these infrared clusters did shift eastward and northeastward. We're zooming out now, looking at the White Rock Lake fire zone. Those western winds came in, pushed these perimeters a little bit to the east, and expanded it from within and pushed out on all those flanks. Here is the smoke for today, uh, looking at those trails heading over to Vernon and also streaming northeastwards towards Armstrong and Spalmachine. We're just jumping southwards for a quick look. Manning Park is at the lower left of the screen. Oliver and Osuyas are at the lower right-hand side of the screen. The Coquihalla Highway is at the upper left-hand side of the screen. Those western winds came in and fanned out the smoke and pushed it into the Okanagan Valley. We're zooming into the Oliver Osuyas area, and here we see the smoke was actually pushed to the east and as well to the southeast. 
This is the infrared for today. We're looking at it on a generic background on NASA's firm system. There is still a lot of activity on the northern and northeast flank of this fire. Just to the north, uh, the fire that's east of Okanagan Falls, that was actually looking quite good. Only two hot spots there. We are now looking at the lower Arrow Lake. Valhalla is in the center of the screen and Nelson is just to the right of center. Here is the smoke for today. That may be obscuring some of those infrared, but uh, I'm not seeing a lot of change in this area. Just a lot of dense smoke in those valley areas. Some clearing in the upper elevations. We've moved north. We're looking at the Shushwap now. This is a satellite image from yesterday showing those smoke trails coming down from the northeast. And here is today. There is a lot of smoke in the area trying to clear and there is more smoke pulling in from those fires to the west. That appears to be a situation where you're going to want to find some proper ventilation. Let's take a quick look at the infrared and make a comparison. This is the data from yesterday and now today. Those western winds are making an effect and they're building up the intensity on these eastern flanks. I'm not seeing a lot of movement or expansion but definitely increased activity. This is another region that is very remote and uh, access may be limited because of the lakes. So you'll definitely want that ground report from BC Wildfire. Go to the link in the description below and check that out. We are zooming out and taking a look at the entire region, southern BC, a lot of smoke. We see those trails moving to the east and then curling up and heading to the northeast. The forecast is for increased south and southwest winds uh, coming in tomorrow. There may be precipitation for some areas tomorrow night. Uh, hopefully that happens in your uh, specific locality. In the meantime, you want to be prepared. Uh, know where the fire line is that's near to you. Uh, what direction is the wind blowing? What vegetation and terrain lies between you and the fire line? And what are your access routes? And it's a good plan to get the ground report from BC Wildfire and make sure you know what the situation is. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you also for your comments and kind words and uh, all your input and insights into these wildfires. Be safe out there and keep your nose to the breeze.